Okay. Time to show. I mean, we all love the, the idea of people talking about security. We all love the idea of there being tools out there that can help us do our jobs. But show me how this actually works. What would be a typical way that a security professional, an IT professional, would use Security Onion? Okay, so we're ready for a demo? Let's do it. All right, so uh, what you see on my screen, this is a, a web interface that we have called Squirt, which is going to show us IDS alerts, right? So everybody's familiar with the concept of an intrusion detection system. Uh, it's basically going to give us an alarm that says, hey, here's some interesting traffic. You need to take a look at this. So we've got some IDS alerts here. Uh, and by the way, this I replayed this PCAP file, which was created by uh, a great guy named Jack Crook, and it's based on the RSA data breach from a few years ago. So this is very heavily modeled after what real world attackers actually do. Uh, and so one of the things that we see here in the IDS alert is a suspicious dot doc dot exe. So this is an attacker who is sending a spear phishing email and trying to convince a user to click on a hyperlink uh, to download a quote unquote harmless word document when in reality it's actually a uh, an executable file. So when we drill into this, and I want to I want to kind of use this as uh, to compare and contrast with kind of the traditional IDS that most folks are used to, and and most enterprise networks have some form of a commercial IDS on them that may generate an IDS alert like this. So when I as an analyst, when when me as a hunter, uh, and I'm looking at this, I'm trying to figure out, okay, well if this is telling me that one of my users downloaded a suspicious looking Windows EXE, my first question might be, well, well, did they actually download the file? Did the download actually complete? And so what we see here is that IDS alerts can, can show us in this case, this IDS alert is showing us that the user requested the file. So we see the HTTP GET request for this file. But the thing that we have to keep in mind about IDS alerts is that IDS alerts are really just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we need to take that tip of the iceberg and we need to look beneath the surface of the water because this IDS alert doesn't even tell me if the web server even had that particular EXE. The web server could have said 404 not found, please go away. But that's why in Security Onion, we provide full packet capture, right? So that's gonna be the videotape that we, we can rewind to really determine exactly what happened before and after that IDS alert. So this is what really makes the difference for incident response. So let's pivot from here to our full packet capture, right? So we've just pivoted from Squirt over to a separate web interface called CapMe, which goes and gets that full packet capture. So now I can see not only the GET request, but I can see the web server's actual response. So the web server says, yep, I've got that file, here it comes. So here's your Windows EXE header. We can scroll down and start looking through here and we can see some clear text indicators in this EXE. Again, because we have full packet capture, we've got this great videotape that we can rewind to see all of these artifacts. So here we see evidence that this is proxy aware malware. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. I can scroll down a little bit further and I start to see other interesting things like, oh, there's a hard-coded IP address. <laughs> I see things like this right here. Right? So we've got the Windows registry key for, for run. That's a right. persistence mechanism that's built into this particular executable. Now, the other thing that I see is this strange looking thing right here. This is actually the default mutex for the Poison Ivy remote access Trojan. Uh, so Poison Ivy has been around for a long, long time, uh, but attackers still use it today. Why? Because it still works. So uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So now instantly, you know, having gone from an IDS alert, which didn't tell me much information, but going to full packet capture, I immediately get many different artifacts, which immediately kind of increase the severity of this particular incident. Because if there's an attacker who's compromised one of my workstations with Poison Ivy, well, then we need to take that very seriously and we need to swing into incident response. 
So at this point, as an incident responder, I'm thinking, well, I need to figure out, okay, if the user downloaded this EXE, did they actually execute it? And so if I see an EXE with a hard-coded IP address, I'm going to say, well, if they execute it, it's probably going to be beaconing out to that command and control server at that IP address. So that's why with Security Onion, we not only give you the IDS alerts that we started with here, the full packet capture that we looked at here, but we also give you transactional data. We give you bro logs. We give you all of this context so that you can really, at a quick glance, figure out, okay, that compromised victim machine, what all did it do? Who all did it talk to? Right. So I can sort of pivot back to here. I can pivot over to Elsa. And that's going to give me this nice listing of all of these different data types, all of this different context that's going to really kind of paint a very vivid picture about what this machine has actually done. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, well, this this BroCon, these are my Bro connection logs. So let me drill into that and let me take a look and see if there's any connections to that IP address that was hard coded in that Windows executable. And sure enough, there's a connection. We see that IP address right here. So we can actually pivot to our full packet capture again. Take a look at that entire TCP stream and we can see here's this Poison IV command and control channel. It's encrypted, so we can't actually see what's going on. But as we scroll through, we, we start to get the feeling that there's this sort of back and forth. Right. There's this interactive shell session where the attacker is actually sending remote commands to this victim machine. He's probably pillaging the village. He's probably doing his lateral movement and probably preparing to do his exfiltration. 